जय गुरुदेव आई होप यू ऑल डन योर होमवर्क आई गिव यू क्वाइट लॉट ऑफ होमवर्क लास्ट वीक वेन वी वर फॉलोइंग खुदाना एंड सिकी ध्वजा स्टोरी स्टोरी कंटिन्यूज फर्दर सो वी कैन बिगिन विद पेज थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फाइव एज इट इज मोस्टली स्टोरी स्टोरी आई विल रीड इट एंड as there is not much explanation for stories we'll just go through it once so let's pay attention page 305 the brahmana kudala continued it is by such nature of the self that this universe is born it is sustained by self limitation or conditioning on account of alternating order and disorder this is an interesting statement the nature was those ripples in the brahman consciousness if you remember from last week it is just born out of it and it remains there and after certain time it dissolves and disappears so there is order as well as there is disorder so it is sustained by self limitation or conditioning now this conditioning of nature happens on account of order and disorder means what only you and i are not conditioned even this so called nature this creation is conditioned conditioned by the arising of the wave the maintenance or the plateau of the wave and then the dissolution of that wave so it is conditioned to arise and fall and arise and fall and arise and fall you would say it's okay for an individual jiva like us to get conditioned but something like nature yes what is nature nature is also collection of all individual jivas like us together right and that also gets conditioned if you remember we spoke about the laws of the universe are run by devas and what are they they are nothing but a higher power a higher power is not just an individual jiva collective jiva working together to bring about that law is what constitutes the higher power and that is also conditioned by its power right just like that nature gets conditioned by its arising and falling by its order as well as disorder when such self limitation and such conflict between order and disorder cease the beings will not be born again yeah so just you and i don't go through birth and death cycle this entire creation this nature goes through a birth and death cycle and that birth and death cycle is also conditioning that going through that birth and death cycle repeatedly also happens because of conditioning the only way for nature to come out of this conditioning of birth and death cycle is to get deconditioned means when the order and disorder cease deconditioning happens and then the beings will not be born again isn't this interesting continuing the story of narada the brahmana said Soon Narada regained his self-control. He gathered the seed which had been split in a pot made of crystal. What seed is he talking about? If you remember a little, a quick refresher. Narada was admiring the naked celestial nymphs who were engaged in water sports and had sexual feelings. so we are talking about that story being continued it was interrupted by sikhidwaja's question earlier so now he continues sorry kudala continues the story in the form of the brahmana 
he gathered the seed which had been split in a pot made of crystal. He then filled the pot with milk produced by his thought force. In due course, that pot gave birth to an infant which was perfect in every respect. Narada named the baby and in course of time imparted the highest wisdom to it. The young boy was a peer to his father. Later, Narada took the boy to Brahma, the creator, the father of Narada. Brahma conferred upon the boy, whose name was Kumbha, the blessing of the highest wisdom. It is that boy, that Kumbha, that grand grandson of Brahma, who is standing before you. I roam the world playfully, for I have nothing to gain from anyone. When I come into this world, my feet do not touch the earth. As Vashishta said this, the 17th day came to an end. The next day, Vashishta continued. Sikhidvaja said, It is truly by the fruition of the good deeds done in my past incarnations that I have obtained your company today and am able to drink the nectar of your wisdom. Nothing in the world gives that peace which the company of the Holy Ones bestows on man. The Brahmana Kudala said, I have told you my life story. Pray, now tell me who you are and what you are doing here. How long have you been here? Tell me everything truthfully, for recluses do not speak anything but the truth. Sikhidvaja replied, O son of the gods, you know everything as it is. What else shall I tell you? I dwell in this forest on account of my fear of the samsara, world cycle or cycle of birth and death. Though you know all this, I shall briefly relate my story to you. I am King Sikhidvaja. I have abandoned my kingdom. I dread the samsara in which one repeatedly and alternately experiences pleasure and pain, birth and death. However, though I have wandered everywhere and though I perform intense austerities, I have not found peace and tranquility. My mind is not at rest. I do not indulge in activities, nor do I seek to gain anything. I am alone here and unattached to anything, yet I am dry and devoid of fulfillment. I have practiced all the Kriya, which is yoga methods, uninterruptedly, but I only progress from sorrow to greater sorrow, and even nectar turns into poison for me. Yeah, so in, on this page, Kudala gives a story as to who she has disguised herself as and she gives a little story of being Narada's son Kumbha or Brahma's grandson Kumbha. She then asks Sikhidhaja who he is and what is he doing in the forest. And Sikhidhaja tells the Brahmana the truth that he is a recluse, that he is this king who has renounced everything but has not experienced peace. That he's trying very hard. He's detached from everything in life but he has not managed to find that rest, that peace that he was looking for in his mind. So now we'll continue the story with page 306. The Brahmana Kudala said, I once asked my grandfather, which is superior, Kriya, action, the practice of a technique or Jnana, self-knowledge. And he said to me, Indeed, Jnana is supreme. For through Jnana, one realizes the one which alone is. On the other hand, Kriya has been described in colorful terms as a pastime. 
If one does not have jnana, then one clings to kriya. If one does not have good clothes to wear, he clings to the sack. The ignorant are trapped by the fruits of their action on account of their conditioning or vasana. When the latter is given up, action becomes no action, whether it is conventionally regarded as good or evil. In the absence of self-limitation or volition, actions do not bear fruit. Actions by themselves do not generate reaction or fruit. It is the vasana or the volition that makes action bear fruit. Just as the frightened boy thinks of a ghost and sees a ghost, the ignorant man entertains the notion of sorrow and suffers sorrow. Now this is really revolutionary. You will say, oh, whatever Kriya I am doing is pastime. What we need to understand that Gurudev gave us both the technique Sudarshan Kriya and the knowledge together on the first day itself. He gave us both together. If we are just holding on to the technique and we have dropped the knowledge, then obviously it is not going to bring results. The knowledge and technique together only bring results. And how does this work? You meditate, you become a little calmer within and that calm mind um, gains the potentiality to absorb knowledge. When you absorb knowledge better, you implement it in life and it makes your meditation deeper. Yeah. Kriya is just a like, you know, when your car has stopped, how we use a jump starter to start it again? Like that only, a Kriya is meant for you to learn to meditate, to go deeper within yourself, to become calmer and quieter with closed eyes. It is a vehicle to reach that quietness that we call meditation yes but if you don't understand how to meditate what is the meaning of quietness how to attain that state where you are absolutely quiet number two after attaining that state where you are absolutely quiet how to withdraw from the thoughts and intellect and memories and images all this is jnana. So jnana is definitely superior than any exercise, whether physical or mental. So any pranayam or any kriya, any action that we do to attain silence is obviously inferior than the knowledge of what to do when you have reached that quiet state and the higher knowledge which is self-knowledge of what this quiet state really is those who have experienced this quiet state or samadhi or um, attain the self when they attained it whatever they experienced they have put it down in scriptures for us to know. When we know somebody else's experience, it is Prabhava Jnana. It is the beginning of Jnana, a good step to start with. But if you get stuck there, that is also inferior. You must meditate yourself to attain Swabhava Jnana. Prabhava Jnana does not take you to the last step. Prabhava Jnana just sheds some light on the road. Swabhava Jnana is that which happens 
automatically by walking on that road. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So naturally walking on that road and attaining self-realization in the form of Svabhava Jnana is going to be superior to anything and everything. Correct? Yeah. So he says Jnana is superior than Kriya. Now the third paragraph where he speaks about the fruit of action is Prabhava Jnana. It is the Brahmana giving the Jnana. It is not your own Swabhava Jnana yet. But you can use this to get to Swabhava Jnana. Yeah. So what does he say? The ignorant are trapped by the fruits of actions. And why are they trapped? It is on account of their own vasana or conditioning. Vasana is nothing but desire. I desire this person. I desire this situation. I desire this thing. This is also desire. And I am averse to this person is also a desire. I am averse to this situation. I don't want this situation is also a desire. And I don't want this thing in life is also a desire. So both ragas and dveshas is equal to vasana, is equal to conditioning. And when vasana is given up, what will happen? Action becomes no action. Yeah? Your karma becomes a karma. Whether it is conventionally regarded as good or evil, it does not matter. It becomes pure. It becomes a karma means I do not collect any seeds of karma in my karma bag from doing this particular action. In the absence of self-limitation or volition, actions do not bear fruit. This is a very important sentence highlighted. In the absence of self-limitation or volition. Volition is nothing but a will to do something or a will to not do something. Just a will yeah, is volition. So he says, without this volition, actions do not bear fruit. Basically, Whatever karma you do, you will not have any karma phalam if you do not have this volition in the mind. And volition is obviously the son of vasana yeah, or the son of desire. Actions by themselves do not generate reaction or fruit. It is the vasana or the volition that makes action bear fruit. Just as the frightened boy thinks of a ghost and sees a ghost, the ignorant man entertains the notion of sorrow and suffers sorrow. And we've done this many times before, the law of attraction. Whatever you think of, whatever you constantly brood on or constantly uh, nurture in your mind, that you attract in life. Even if you say, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, you are continuously giving energy to that particular this. And then that this comes in life. It becomes your reality. Whether it is a ghost or it is Dukkha, both are the same. Neither the vasana, which is self-limitation or conditioning, nor the ego sense is a real entity. They arise because of foolishness. When this foolishness is abandoned, there is the realization that all this is Brahman and there is no self-limitation. When there is vasana, there is mind. When the vasana ceases in the mind, there is self-knowledge. One who has attained self-knowledge is not born. So it is not real. Vasana arises only because of our foolishness. The moment foolishness is abandoned, then 
realization comes, oh, that all this is Brahman. And when there is Vasana, there is mind. When the Vasana ceases, mind ceases. Because Vasana or desire is equal to mind. No? The moment Vasana ceases, mind ceases. And there is self-knowledge. One who has attained self-knowledge is not born again. Thus, even the gods, Brahma and others, have declared that self-knowledge alone is supreme. Why then do you remain ignorant? Why do you think this is the commandal and this is a stick and remain immersed in ignorance? Why do you not inquire who am I? How has this world arisen and how does all this cease? Why do you not reach the state of the enlightened by inquiring into the nature of bondage and liberation? Why are you wasting your life in these futile austerities and other kriya? It is by resorting to the company of holy ones, by serving them and inquiring of them, that you will attain self-knowledge. Do you get it? So according to Kudala and according to Vashishta, self-contemplation and jnana will reach you there. Just a mechanical practice of any yogic, um, any yogic practices will not take you there. You need to really become clear that these yogic practices are just so that you move away from the attraction and repulsion of this world and for some time move into self-contemplation. Self-contemplation alone can take you there. There is no other way to attain self-knowledge without self-contemplation. Kriya and other practices just help you get into that mode of self-contemplation. But if you just hold on to the external yogic practices without moving inwards into self-contemplation and jnana, then they lose their importance. They, it defeats the purpose of those yogic practices. That is why Kudala is encouraging Sikhi Dvaja here that why are you indulging in all this and not contemplating on who am I, what is this universe Yes, and other deeper questions. Sikhidwaja said, Aha, I have truly been awakened by you, O sage. I am freed of foolishness. You are my guru. I am your disciple. Pray instruct me in what you know, knowing which one does not grieve. The Brahmana Kudala replied, O royal sage, I shall instruct you if you are in a receptive mood and cherish my words. If one prayfully instructs another, Merely in answer to a query, when the latter does not intend to receive, cherish and assimilate the teaching, it becomes fruitless. After receiving such an assurance from Sikhi Dvaja, Kudala said, Listen attentively, I shall narrate to you a story which resembles yours. This is so beautifully written. Every teacher, every guru wants to give the knowledge only to a sincere seeker, to somebody who will definitely cherish the words. Because a guru or a teacher who has reached that stage has no fun, does not really enjoy being in this world or talking or giving jnana or, you know, any kind of power. There is a power that comes from sitting on this seat. There is a power that comes from being a teacher. Yes. A real guru does not even relish in that power that comes from this seat. A real guru really wants to give that knowledge only to a sincere seeker. 
because he, that guru has realized himself that how futile this entire samsara is. So his time becomes more and more precious to him. Yeah. And he does only those actions that which really will benefit one and all. He does not indulge in fruitless action. If he gives jnana or knowledge to a person who is not ready and receptive, then what is the point? He has wasted his time and the disciples' time. That is why you will notice that there were many, many gurus in the past who tested their disciples or the seekers who came to them. They always wanted to know whether this person really deserves the knowledge. Only when they tested the disciple and the disciple came out really strong and ready to receive the knowledge, only then would they spend their precious time in helping that particular disciple walk the path. Homework question for you. Are you a sincere seeker? Do you deserve this knowledge? Are you really worthy of this knowledge? Have you moved from being just um, a curious person who is curious about spirituality to somebody who sincerely wants to work towards his or her enlightenment? Ask yourself this question. If you have not reached there, what is the point of you even attending these Yoga Vashishta classes? Yeah. It is very important for a seeker to do a reality check. So This is your homework. Do some reality check this week. Yeah. Are you worthy of this knowledge? And I shall see you next week, continuing forward with the story of Kudala and Sikhi Maja. Until then, keep doing your homework and Jai Gurudev.